nuclear fire. And yet, the sun is an ordinary, even a mediocre star. Our ancestors worshiped the sun, and they were far from foolish. It makes good sense to revere the sun and the stars, because we are their children. We have witnessed the life cycles of the stars. They are born, they mature, and the and clouds then they look die. like they were right over the, the mountains. On, the one where right Papa's dig site is supposed to be. There was so much lightning. Hmm, lightning, huh? It was the craziest storm I've ever seen, Mama. And did you hear all of that thunder? Yeah, thunder. I suppose it was rather loud. The girl's mother took a small bite out of the peach, her face partially concealed by a copy of Time magazine she was reading, as a segment from the show Cosmos, which was the girl's favorite show at the time, played out on the Panasonic television set in the living room across from them. And have you ever seen lightning, like, curve? These crazy zigzags, kind of. Yeah, curvy, I'll say. The way that dress fits her just right. The, this weird one I saw, it was moving so slow. You ever seen lightning like that, Mama? Mama? Her mother simply bowed her head slightly before shaking it. Ah, uh, yes, Shirley. I said, have you ever seen lightning like that? Moving real slow? Like some kind of creepy worm in the sky? Oh, Shirley, honey, lightning doesn't move slowly. That's why it's called lightning and not some other thing. Sounds like that imagination of yours is going wild, sweetheart. Were you playing those video games before bed again? You know those things have been known to play wild tricks on the brain. Well, I... I know lightning is supposed to be fast. It just looks so creepy. Isn't Papa out there digging? I hope he's okay. I don't know what your Papa is up to. Sometimes I don't know if I rightfully care. I'm sure him and all of his other sandbox buddies are perfectly fine. Ugh. <laughs> and would you look at that. A station wagon was seen pulling up to the driveway in the kitchen window. The girl could see her mother briefly roll her eyes before proceeding to gingerly remove the laced ribbon that kept her brunette hair secured in a bun at the top of her head, letting it fall to her back. As the car parked and its doors opened, her mother used her hands to smooth out some creases on her skirt, and as the front door creaked like a switch, her expression beamed with a wide smile of greeting. I agree with her. We should give them a call, just to corroborate our stories for any notable similarities. Of course. When we return to the laboratory, that will be our first course of action. Papa! You're home! And you're safe! She sprang to her feet, eager to meet her father at the door, relieved to see he was unharmed. Two companions filed in behind him in the doorway. A balding, older-looking gentleman and a younger, short-haired woman. Her father leaned down to give her a warm hug. <laughs> it's good to see you again, little one. Were you concerned while I was away this time? I'm quite all right, as you can see. Well, Shirley here was simply convinced that the storm last night had swallowed you guys up or something. Well, who are these two you've brought along with you? I would have prepared some refreshments if I knew we were having some company, Isaac. Her father stood up straight and gave his wife a smile as he began to walk toward the living room. He made a hand gesture to motion for the companions he brought with him to follow. Don't worry about that, Sarah. We won't be here long. These are my colleagues, by the way. Amanda Kenson and Gavin Archer. An incident occurred at our dig site last night, and we'll have to return soon to help compile a full report with the authorities. Oh, something happened in the mountains? So something did happen out there. I knew it. Was it that weird lightning? It was like it was looking for something. <laughs> well, isn't she just precious? Her father and his companions were standing at different ends of the coffee table near the television set, 
The older gentleman had produced a tattered-looking map from his backpack, which he rolled out along the table. She is, isn't she? We had an issue come up, but it was unrelated to that turbulent weather we had last night. Our team was safe at the lab during the storm, rest assured. However, when we returned to the site this morning, we discovered it was ransacked. It was... what? What does that mean? Is it serious? It means that people came in and took stuff without asking. <laughs> well, who would want to steal a bunch of old Indian junk anyway, though? Sarah, please. People... stole stuff? Her mother was leaning against the wall across from the table, with her arms folded. Even though she seemed to be addressing her husband, her eyes wouldn't avert for even a second from the woman that came in with him. What? I'm just being honest. All I'm saying is that I'd rather hit something big if I'm gonna be facing jail time. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's a black market for ancestor of Pobloan artifacts. There are collectors all over the world who would pay a sizable sum for authentic pieces. Her mother narrowed her eyes at the short-haired woman in a scornful way for an awkward few moments that seemed like hours. Her father spoke up in an effort to cut the growing tension. <clears throat> Amanda is right. Whoever it was stole a particularly crucial piece to our current research. A prestigious crown that we presume was related to the rituals of an Anasazi cult. What is particularly concerning is how they came about the location in the first place. That information isn't available to the general public. The older gentleman had taken out a black pen and was making a few marks on the outstretched map at the table. It's worth noting that similar events have occurred at other Anasazi ruins as well. We're actually going to call our colleagues over in Montezuma County in Colorado to see if there are any similarities between our cases. So, why are you guys here then? Looks like you've still got some more thrilling adventures back at the Sacramento Mountains. Amanda raised her hand with a bashful smile. That would be because of me. I live in the area and during my scheduled days off, I, well, I've been having a bit of car trouble. I need a carpool back to the site, so the boys came back to town to swoop me up. We're just stopping in for a brief reprieve before making the drive back, Sarah. Oh, is that why you're home? Huh. Well, you guys enjoy your little get-together. I'll just leave you to all of your important talk, hmm? Of course. It was good to see you, Sarah. We'll catch up on my next day off. Yeah, sure. The next one. Everyone, besides the little girl, had returned to leaning over the map, so they didn't notice her mother grab the Time magazine that she had on the table as she stormed off to her room. And here I thought you'd come to see me. What a dumb idea, right? <laughs> oh, silly me. Although concerned for her mother, she had grown used to these odd interactions in their household recently, and she was currently more interested in finding out more about her father's work. What are you looking at, Papa? She peered over the map beside her father now, as the older gentleman seemed to chart a course from his fingers from a certain point of drawn ridges. Mountains. It's a map of the mountains in the immediate area. We're noting some possible new locations of study. A new one? What's wrong with the old one? Amanda was looking up from the map with her brimming blue eyes. Her wide grin and unwavering stare made the little girl's cheeks flush a bashful red. She's a curious one, just like you say, Isaac. How cute. I can see it in her eyes. She's going to mature into such a smart young lady. <laughs> Agreed. There's a reason why I call her my little codex. She retains information so well. Isn't that right, Shirley? The girl simply smiled an awkward smile, moving a few inches behind her father in an attempt to conceal her reddening face. She's a bit shy around unfamiliar faces, but she means well. Shirley, the police are investigating our current site right now. They need some time to gather any clues that might lead them to those thieves. We'll be using this time to try and locate similar locations of study based on some translated texts we found. So you are going back. Is it safe? The storm might come back. 
We'll be safe, my little one. We're on the verge of discovering something big. Maybe even the reason for the sudden disappearance of the Anasazi culture. Oh yeah, this is definitely big. We found a sect that worshipped completely different deities from the other ancient Puebloans. These guys were into some sinister rituals. I'll tell you that. Some of them probably even engaged in cannibal- <clears throat> Amanda gave an abrupt elbow to the older gentleman's side before he could finish, glaring at him. Gavin, come on. She's a ten-year-old girl. She doesn't need to hear all that, all right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, right. I guess I got a little carried away. My apologies. You'll have to excuse Gavin. He's just... passionate about his work. Hmm. It looks like we'll have to depart soon if we're to miss the traffic. So soon? You just got here. You didn't even bring any cool stuff to show me. The three of them, her father, Gavin, and Amanda, exchanged an assortment of amused glances and smirks between themselves. Her father gave her a pat on the head. She smiled, regardless of her disappointment. She cherished every moment that her father could spend with her, and this was no different, no matter how brief it was. So, can we tell her yet, Isaac? Can we? She looks so disappointed. Maybe that will cheer her up. I suppose now would be a good time to tell her. You did remember to bring it, didn't you, Gavin? Gavin's face flashed a mischievous smile before he opened a smaller compartment of his backpack, and he began to produce some sort of rectangular device. It was marked with scratches, nicks, and dents all over its surface. She thought the bronze coat and burgundy outline looked vaguely familiar, but where had she seen it before? You bet I did! You're in for a real treat, Shirley. I hear you've got a thing for video games, correct? Me too. Although some people here believe I'm a little too old for that stuff. Gavin shot a quick glance at Amanda, who simply shrugged her shoulders. I still think they're for kids. It's a passing fad anyway. Soon all those companies will be out of business. Have you seen the news about those dropping Atari stock prices? Some stores can't even get the games off the shelves, even in the bargain bin. Say, while we're looking for the new dig sites today, why don't we see if we can find where Atari is bearing all those copies of E.T.? <laughs> yeah, don't listen to Miss Buzzkill over here. You and me, Shirley, we see eye to eye. Ever got your hands on a portable console? Gavin made his way over to her, grinning widely. He held the device out to her in open palms, as if presenting an offering. Now that it was closer, she recognized what it was right away. She recalled seeing a commercial about one just the other week. Is that a... Game & Watch? Amanda spotted it along the mountainside this morning, and with no one around to claim it, we figured we'd give it a new home. With you. Take it, Shirley. It's yours. Sense, but you make me better. The three but that.